Well, thank you, Richard. So uh, we are on time. That's fantastic. So, so excited to see um, the, the workshop comes to the end. In the last uh, three half days, I actually I was able to uh, sit in uh, and nearly all the session except missing a small part of that. So I learned a lot. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody's participation. Um, I'm going to use my few minutes to also share with you some of my uh, thought right here, very simple words right here. Um, cause is, you know, certainly is the determining factor right there is with or without uh, the carbon price, carbon tax, certain carbon price right there. Cause is important. We keep talking about scale, right? The unit gigaton terawatt hour is the, is the unit we need to uh, use all the time. I'm so glad that Steve mentioned efficiency. That's something we need to pay attention to energy efficiency. Every step, and also Shafiq mentioned that also, every time you touch, you're going to have a cost uh, associated with that, and also efficiency loss, right? I myself work on batteries and as well as catalysis. So I look at lithium ion, I say, my God, 90%, 95% efficiency, energy efficiency. Well, once I split water to generate hydrogen, my efficiency drop a lot. And then I use hydrogen for fuel, so I, I, I get a heat again. This is all built into your cost. And also throughput is important. Uh, that for the reason we talk about scale, throughput is, is important. And particularly if you look into, there's a lot of discussion about electrochemical type of process right there. Indeed, electrochemical processes to scale to the, to the level we want, we still need to figure that out. Reliability is important, or, or I all say, you know, intermittency or for solar and wind, you know, that's why we keep talking about, well, you cannot just do, it, do this uh, process during the day, you also need to run it during the night. Do you want to have a uh, medium and long duration storage to couple in or not? Maybe you need to do that. So circular nature of uh, discussion is there, whether it's from the resources availability, the waste generation right there, this sounds important. System view, I, I put in something right here, whether you can see the electron, the electricity, the grid, or your hydrogen, the methane, the ammonia, the fuel, the CO2, and the heat. And uh, it's not a single technology's answer. Each of these words right there, there's a large number of technology associated with it. How do we put this whole system together? And then at last is the partnership between academia, industry, and government. That is to say from the fundamental research, concept demonstration to pilot, right? You know, Amy mentioned that in, in her talk and uh, to pilot scale, to scale up, to utilize the policy to, you know, to help scaling up, to build the infrastructure, whether it's a new electrical grid infrastructure or is the uh, hydrogen pipeline and the whole infrastructure need to uh, get government uh, involved to, 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 to do it. So these are some of the key takeaway using keywords uh, for me to summarize. And uh, that has also been uh, very important, this workshop to me to build up the whole Stanford ecosystem. You know, some of you have seen me showing you this fabric of Stanford Energy uh, uh, Research Ecosystem. Verticals uh, uh, columns are those uh, science, engineering, uh, technology initiative, but we are building a pre institute and the whole Stanford energy ecosystem. Horizontals are those uh, skills that we still need. Let me emphasize data, AI for energy system. We really need to take the system view. Um, and uh, each of these lines, this fabric line, fabric right there, uh, is the fiber right there, it's not a stone piping, it's highly interactive. So I think it's workshop, uh, the, uh, the learning, the problems, your, uh, your brain power contribution will help us to plan for our sustainable manufacturing initiative down the road. I mean, this sustainable manufacturing initiative will be interacting with hydrogen, carbon removal, bits and bar storage X and data AF energy system a lot. Uh, with that short summary, uh, 
let me uh, end my conclusion remark by thanking uh, all of you, uh, uh, thanking the speakers, panelists, and moderators. Uh, it is your hard work to make this happen. Uh, this is a long list of people. I won't uh, name you individually. Uh, I want to just pick out some people I would like to thank. Uh, certainly, it's our faculty organizing committee, uh, Mattel, Chris, Liora, and the managing director, Liang Ming, and also our external sponsor, the advisory committee, Drew, Christian, and Amit. And during this planning, I think your hard work really <laughs> are the reason to, uh, to be able to put a program like this together. And our student note takers, Eric, Melissa, uh, Sabetra, our video staff, Justin and Eric. Uh, last but not least, these uh, three people are otherwise spending day and night to make sure this uh, workshop can happen. Maxine, Richard, and Jenny. Uh, and our uh, long-term uh, sponsor, ExxonMobil, Total, and Shell. Uh, with that, I will end my uh, concluding remark. Let me pass this to uh, Amy. All right, thanks, thanks, E. Um, you know, I think uh, we had a lot of discussions on scale, and um, you know, of course, the the gigaton scale, the CO two emissions, the um, industrial scale. And by the way, I have to say, you know, being in the oil and gas um, chemicals industry, it's still eye-opening for me to hear about the scale in steel and cement, which of course we use in the oil and gas industry, but just again, to realize the scale of these heavy industries is, um, is really eye-opening. Um, but the, and then of course the scale up going from lab to, to field, but I was thinking, you know, <clears throat> over the last couple of days and especially during the, you know, talks uh, the, today, the, there's another scale issue, which I think people have brought up, which is the, the amount of R&D we're going to need to solve these uh, industrial decarbonization problems. So yet a third use of the word scale. Um, and uh, Amy, we have a thousand students here at Stanford working on energy. We need yeah. to go even bigger. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, so anyway, so multiple uses of the word scale and, uh, you know, which which is, you know, can sometimes be daunting, but on the other hand, I think it's really exciting. And I think what, again, I learned and I love the hearing all the talks over the last three days, you know, there's a lot of fun to be had um, in long-term R&D in the spaces um, and the heavy industry. I mean, there's a, there's a big need and there's a lot of fun to be had, I think, um, in these spaces. And I, I think the other thing I was thinking about um, over the last couple of days is, is the interconnectedness of all of these different uh, challenges that we talk about. And E, in some ways, your, your, your beautiful basket weave of you know, pre-court and all of the, the themes that you mentioned, I think highlights that. And that you know, many of these, you know, there are some processes that are specific to one industry and so on, and maybe heat, I used to think of heat, well, maybe process heat is something that's kind of an industrial specific process, but not really because we, you know, people were talking about maybe, for example, uh, using um, you know, heat integration into cities um, and sharing process heat um, for residential commercial use, for example. So what really struck me is the interconnectedness of all of these different um, sources of energy and the different sectors, um, not just industry, but how it couples to power generation, of course, um, you know, transportation, uh, and also uh, residential commercial um, and, you know, including in addition to all the different energy sources, also demand um, and changes in demand reduction. And so it just got me thinking that it's hard to put a box around what is industrial decarbonization and what goes into one of the other, other buckets. And I think that's okay. Um, but I think it, 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 there's an increasing need to think about the sector coupling between all of the, the different sectors and the interplay. So again, the systems view, but not just an industrial systems view, but really thinking about the global energy systems view is gonna be important because um, I think that interconnectedness will just uh, bring more opportunities. So it's really striking. I just wanna say thank you all. Thank you to Stanford and the whole list of, of folks, but especially um, to you know Richard, Maxine, and and and, and Jennifer um, for organizing all of this and for the team of people that put it together. 
Um, and, and thanks advance for all the faculty and postdocs and students who are thinking about this space. And I really look forward to hearing about your, um, your ideas and seeing what research proposals come out of this. Thank you, Amy. Next, uh, Shafiq. Thanks, Yi. It's uh, been very interesting three days. Uh, uh, I'd say maybe seven years ago, six years ago, when I was talking about the word systems and uh, with faculty and uh, academia was uh, speaking into, uh, let's say, an echo chamber, just speaking to myself. It was uh, very difficult for people to understand why we needed to think from end to end. And this is uh, wonderful to see the uh, dialogue between the academic and the industry really starting to become much more uh, common in its themes and its uh, way it's speaking about things, looking at uh, the analysis, et cetera, which is wonderful. I do think um, there's still a lot to be done there. There's still a lot of challenges left uh, still in the systems thinking, especially in integrating different systems together. We can't just think of the petrochemical industry alone or the oil industry alone. We need to think about how other industries are going to tie into it. Things like cement steel infrastructure, as we've mentioned, uh, play heavily into this. And then our scope three emissions uh, of our customers and how they use a lot of these products has to be thought into the systems level thinking. Uh, you know, we've spoken primarily in the last three days, I would say on scope one type emission control. But really, when we talk about scope two and scope three, you know, how you think about at the systems level, what the optimal solution is, uh, is going to change dramatically. The second one that uh, to reemphasize, you know, where our markets are going to be tomorrow in 10 years and 20 years, 30 years is going to be very different. And we need to be thinking about solutions that are not just for fit what we see today. We need to be thinking much more broadly. We need to be thinking much more widely. And I think Arun mentioned this in his opening talk quite well, but I would like to emphasize this is a key area that we cannot um, get lost in our own little uh, bubbles of looking to solve our own problems alone. We need to be thinking about scalability of the solutions, not just scalability of the size of the challenge. Uh, and we've talked about scale a lot. Um, in, in the three days, but uh, you know, the challenge ahead for the next three and a half billion people to, to come onto the face of the earth is going to be tremendous to live a very different lifestyle than uh, what we've lived. So I think this is a, a big challenge facing us. And the last one that I, I put aside and didn't really um, hear a lot about, but I think is a major challenge we face which is the pace at which we, and the urgency at which we have to get these solutions and technology out the door. And industry is guilty just uh, like anybody else, which is about uh, how do you do uh, durability, stability, and eventually you know, bankability on any new process. And risk-taking is not in the nature of the oil and gas industry. It's uh, very risk averse and they want to have everything really well buttoned up before you're going to run. And I think this is going to be a major cultural shift as we think about carbon management going forward, how to accelerate kind of reduction of emissions uh, and bringing technology in line. And I think this is going to be uh, quite a challenge for management to get their heads wrapped around in terms of uh, what risk profiles they're going to take. So I think this is another area where uncertainty analysis, risk analysis uh, from the academics is going to be extremely helpful. You know, what, what is the value of that next data point or what is the value of that next uh, experiment uh, to be done or the next pilot scale, is that really going to change the decision or is that really going to give us an answer that makes us think about things in a very different way than uh, running faster and moving faster. So I think this is a, another point that I, I walked away thinking we left a bit of a hole in the discussion, but perhaps for the next uh, uh, workshops, we can be thinking about this as well in terms of carbon management. So with that, I, I would just like to say thank you to all the speakers. It's been uh, stimulating three days of hearing uh, different perspectives and trying to weave it together and kind of uh, coalesce some ideas together here at the end. And I really appreciate uh, the interaction and the time we've had together. Thank you. With that, uh, Richard, do you have uh, a few uh, final words to, uh, to say? Um, really just to say thank you to everyone who participated, I think. Um, you know, we, it was a lot of work putting this workshop together, and um, I think it's, it's paid off. And I really appreciate the work from the the you know from industry, from faculty who've helped out, 
And also, you know, everyone who participated, it was, as I counted all those pictures on that slide, you, there were like 36 pictures there, 36 people who participated in, in um, panels and, and so on. So it's been a, it's been a good three days. I think, uh, you know, it's been very helpful discussions and it will help us as we um, move forward in, in deciding what our, um, what our research uh, directions are going to be as, as well. And I, you know, I think the dialogue, if we can continue this dialogue between industry and, and uh, academia, we can really um, come up with some, some, we can really move, move the needle is what I would say. So thank you to everyone. And um, I think we can close now. And um, if anyone wants to do any networking, I'll put that slide up. And if anyone wants to um, have any private conversations, we can do that. So thank you again and, and uh, take care and goodbye.